Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fett on UBNRadio.com. And welcome. You are tuned in to Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at Naturally High Noon out of the Sunset Hour studio on Universal Broadcasting Network and now Thursdays on my NBC News Radio channel, KCAA, AM 1050 at 7 p.m. for your driving pleasure. And you have tuned in to a show about hope and happiness 88% of the time. So there's no gossip, no scandal, no K-words, no Kardashian talk. Instead, this is a show where you get to see and hear and think about the best of who you are and the best of where the planet is. And it is the last week of the month. So if I say Marvin Gaye, it's a hint on what we're talking about today, and that is sexual healing with Dr. Marissa. And I have a special treat. We brought her back because she did so amazingly well with me. We're like little twins now and I love her and she says that she wanted to come back so we have the beautiful the talented the amazing Don Wells from Gilligan's Island Marianne (laughs) and today we're gonna have a little fun on the air because we're not gonna talk about Gilligan's Island so much this time. We are going to talk about sex. Can we talk about sex? Yes, in baby. Front of all these people. <laughs> My mother would be so proud. <laughs> yeah, I, I talk about, you know, people go, what's wrong? Why are you talking about sex on the air now? And, and uh, just a little background. Do you know that up to 80% of women in, in a few studies fake orgasms? And they, even now, even now. So sex, I wanted to talk about sex and pleasure. And the other reason is because many young women and older women, and myself included, when I take my clothes off, I don't go, woo. I go, blah. And and this whole thing around body image and how we look and how comfortable we are. And nobody talks about the light side of sex. Right. It's uh, sex, sexual abuse or pornography or all of the the very dark parts of sex. And so I said, you know what? I want to talk about the, the, the upside or the light side or the fun side. And I want to I want to I'm determined to make pleasure, which is one of the gifts of life. It's important. Okay. It's important to let it yes. slide by and have nothing but negativity. Slide. Slide by. <laughs> We're oh, talking we're about lube. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, and it's and it's okay. You know, I was talking to uh, a mom yesterday, and she's like, "Oh, I can't talk to my kid about you know." Uh, he was talking about masturbating, and I I didn't want to go there, and I didn't want to talk about. Or he talked about making out with this girl, and I didn't want to talk about. It. And it's like we have to talk about it because we're the ones that are setting the. This the the okay standard. Yeah, where does he learn otherwise? Exactly from alley, his friends, friend or right? Yeah. Or mm-hmm. porn. And so this is a show where every month we have one episode that we talk about sex, baby. Pretty hard to talk about sex with just seven poor little people on that island, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have any at all. The yeah. censors wouldn't Six. allow that. <laughs> well, the, yeah. No, I mean, no, we couldn't. You there couldn't. No, no double bed. Cleavage covered, navel covered, no necking, no sex, no anything. I mean, in that day and age, and look where we've come or gone or whatever we want to call it. Literally come. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so I'm going to give you a quiz. Uh Uh-oh. Is there a right or wrong answer? I went and looked. According to my sources, 
Kinsey Institute and a couple of other research sites. How men, what, what do you think the average age a man loses his virginity is at? Today. 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 15. Close. 16.9. Oh, he grew up a little. He I grew up a little. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> and females, slightly older. I mean, slight, yeah, slightly older at 17.4. But not that much of a difference anymore. What was the man? 16.9 and 17.4. So let's do a little reflection. So in those days, in Gilligan's Island's days, because I know a lot of people when they interview you, they ask you, so what's changed from that era? You you know, when it was scandalous for you to wear the, the short the shorts, shorts, right? Um, what would you say... Because I, I was kind of surprised at these numbers. I thought they had gotten younger with all the things that I hear about, you know, sex in middle school and all of that stuff. But what? How well, you see, has, in my generation, yes. my generation was older than your generation. In my generation, the big fear was pregnancy. Mm. Pre there wasn't the birth control pill was invented after we got on the island, mm -hmm. you know. And I do think that makes a big difference. If you weren't afraid of getting pregnant, that makes a huge difference. And then I think. Um, Everything they're exposed to, everything they see, it seems to be okay. It doesn't seem to be a moral issue. It seems to be an emotional issue. Or do you feel that you have to do it to be to, to be popular? Right. All of those things, right? Kind of, the you pressured know? into sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you let's let's look at um, STDs. Oh yes. Okay. So because now uh, you know when I when I talk to teens, and I'm really grateful that I have a very open conversation with my daughter and her friends her teenage friends and we talk about sex and when you're ready and the pressure or not the pressure mm -hmm. or the reputation and it's not necessarily pregnancy now that there is a fear uh, which is a healthy fear because if they're not ready to raise a children That's right. then right then it's stds so what do you think uh the percent of sexually active men and women will have genital HPV infection at some point in their lives. How many sexually active men and women do you think are going to have and is that, does that genital mean, HPV now? No. Okay. Fifty mm. percent. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. You're like you're like right on. She was doing some guessing of my stats and she was right on. 50%, yeah, it's 50%. So sexually transmitted diseases, not even th talking about, you know, HIV, it is a realistic concern, which is why I had that show. I had a condom researcher on here. Oh, you did? Yeah. And you and discovered was, what? what and That's I discovered that, that um, if we look at condoms as a pleasure tool, so it's not just a, uh, Prevention. Prevention. So it's like it's better with latex is their code line or their or their um, motto that that you can actually increase and enhance your pleasure with. Is uh, that the truth? With a condom. We're two women here. I we have know that been, for sure. <laughs> I don't. Well, I, I, if I yeah. asked 10 men um, and I've asked 10 men, right, it, would you prefer whether to have sex with or without a condom 10 out of 10 say without a condom right. but then if they the realities of sexually transmitted disease and the realities of pregnancy and and the realities of catching something that you can never get rid of are very high that percentage so, is very important so to it's pay a, attention to exactly for exactly. sure so so the bs the belief system that we're trying to move into is that pleasure you can have pleasure from sex with a condom just as as well as well yeah yeah so maybe I don't know if that's ever gonna happen but here's the interesting thing that I didn't know you know you know uh, for me <laughs> this is when self-disclosure gets very embarrassing but hey I say we have to talk about so I'll start with me so I thought that if I and I'm happily divorced so I'm dating uh, I meet a guy I want to go to that next level of sexual intimacy my question used to be have, when was the last time you got tested? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Important. Mm -hmm. Important knowledge. I just found out from the doctor that there are some things, what I just mentioned, HPV, that won't show up in a test for men. Did you now, know that? What is HPV then? So HPV is, the, is one of the leading, uh, they're actually trying to inoculate. Uh, is that the herpes? Young, that is, no, no. It's called, here, human... Pa yeah. Papillomar virus comes in both 
low and high risk forms. The low risk can cause genital warts and high risk can cause cervical and other cancers. In 90% of cases, the body immune system will fight off the disease within two years. So the good news is it could be curable. It could, it, it's never curable though. They say that it can go into hiding or, you know, but it can surface. But isn't and there some kind of vaccination now? Now for young yes, women. For young women. I run yes. a family foundation and we finance that. I mean, gave a grant so that the young girls yes. that are yes. kind of in trouble can take care of themselves. E- exactly. Mm-hmm. So to get it before they start. Yes. But but here's the, the issue is that even if I'm asking for a man to be tested and they say they're clean, they, they're really not. I mean, because they don't know if they're carrying this. Only the woman knows you can't so test that it. You, you can't get can't, a blood test and they sh- it shows up in a man not in a man so you're just a carrier then you're a carrier oh, i see. know wow. i know so so that means you know my doctor's just like there's it's just not an option if you're sexually active and you have more than one partner or if you have a partner that's not that you're not married to and it's a relationship you have to use a condom so that's why it becomes even more important that it's better with latex. <laughs> yes, I guess that's right. I guess right? so, for sure. Right? Yes. But that does lead me to another, um, how many different kinds of orgasms do you think you can have? You mean fe- male and female or just everybody in general? <laughs> Total it all up, 432. Uh, female. Female. Female kinds. And and, and I had... Um, I'd say three. Three? Eleven. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> What have you been hiding me from? Wait a minute. Let's talk. Turn off this machine. <laughs> I had a, a tantric specialist come on. She was my co-host a couple of shows, Davy Ward. And she actually has it in her book. And it's 11 different kinds of orgasms. What, 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 what kind of specialist is she? She's a tantric. Have I you ever heard no, of tantric? Heard it's um, oh, tantric. It's hard to explain. the, the I, I don't want to butcher it, but it is a sect. It's a, a, a one of the expressions of Buddhism, uh-huh. it's, uh, it, and it deals with uh, the sexual and or the pleasure. And, and there's things like semen retention uh, for the male, and it's uh, there's other terms. She's going to shoot me because I don't remember all of them. She's trained me. Uh, in and oh, educated me on some of this like and, to read and something. yeah it, it's enhancing your sexual pleasure and that's wow. why I do this show is because I think that women kind of short themselves out right probably because now see I'm older than you are probably because it wasn't a conversation you had with your mother the conversation you had with your mother is do I or don't I should I or shouldn't I uh, and and protection yes but you never got into what's the pleasure and right and how do you take care of yourself right and all of those exactly. things at all exactly and and that's why but here here here's something uh, Don that you don't know is that that conversation still mostly doesn't happen and why is that are we afraid to <laughs> You know the the it, you're you and your whys. <laughs> why 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 I'm always why why don't we talk about it? Don and I are talking about doing a regular show together, and we're trying to figure out the title. And she's very curious. So why why um, why is that? There's many, and I'm the systemic uh, uh, scientist, so I am not a Newtonian where it's like there's one reason why. Right. So there's many many factors on why that is. So one is definitely the embarrassment factor, which you just don't want to talk about that with your kids. And part of it too is your kids don't want to hear it from you because no, right. I know my kids. You know, as soon as I start, mom, 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 mom. But what I do is I can, I keep talking, and then they know. <laughs> They're Although, gonna hear it or or else they, they exactly they hear it and what they'll do though is it is it plants a seed and so then yesterday I get texted at home while she's at school and she tells me about this really funny situation between um you know she's in her class and both of her two ex boyfriends are in that new class the new semester and it was so wonderful to have her open to you yeah yeah yeah. like it wasn't about sex but just that freedom because i'll talk about anything with her and then and then it it allows for that open exchange Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so so yes that's why i want to talk about it is because we still don't talk about it i grew up with a very very puritanical mom Uh, my parents were divorced and and they were friends Mm -hmm. and and i had two families that loved me my father lived in las vegas with his with my stepmother, my mother and I lived in Reno, so I didn't have the interaction as much with my father as I did with my mother. Mm-hmm. My mother, I'm sure, was so concerned that, my gosh, I'm raising a daughter alone and she could get pregnant and all those things back in my generation. Right. 
my stepmother was much more open. And I keep thinking, I, I probably would have been frigid or resisted had I not seen my stepmother, I don't want to say seducing, but romantically flirting with my father. I saw mm. a real sexual attraction between the two of them. I don't mean anything in front of me. Right. But I saw that where my mother closed off because she mm. didn't want to have an example for me. And I thought, I really had the best of both worlds. Mm. Uh, you know, being right. able to understand it the, now. And the, I think if you have a extreme. sister, you and your sister talk about it and go talk to your mother. It's easier than you doing it alone. Yeah. If it's a brother. Yeah. I mean, I have a, a, a godson that is having an intimate relationship with his girlfriend. And and his grandmother and I are very good friends. And she was talking about birth control. And, and, and she called up, the, the daughter just called up the mother and said, I think Matthew and I are going to do this. What do I do? And I went, wow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a wonderful thing that the daughter would then con talk to the mother before she ever did anything mm -hmm. because she was interested in protecting yeah. herself yeah that's very rare i don't have yes. children see so i don't really know when that happens yeah it's um well you know <laughs> when i was doing the research and i saw that that uh, average age it was like okay i have a 15 year old and a 17 year old mm -hmm. and i'm grateful that we've already talked about all yes. that yes. you know so they know it's not about the act of sex it's about what happens after you have sex did you know, you know, when you have sex, it's not just the act and it's you not actually just that moment. have, you have consequences, but you also have positive things, but you also have, you know, the bonding experience and, and that women have more of that oxytocin bonding experience mm -hmm. than men do. So really be careful. The first one that you do, if he's a jerk, you're going to have a real problem because yes. you're going to get codependent because you're going to excuse everything he does. So, you know, when, when to have sex, this, I, they know what, what I say about you when know, to have sex. I, I was watching um, one of the long, I don't know, House of Thorns or, or one of those, no, the, the Borgias, mm. the Borgias, and, and all about th that history and all about um, popes having children and all about mistresses and, mm. and the children are watching their fathers with their mistresses. Everything was so out in the open. Everything was discussed. Mm -hmm. I don't know what time did we all close the doors. Right. You know, at what time? Right. And now we're opening them slowly. Well, but yeah. But it was closed for a very the whole Victorian era. It was yeah. closed completely. Well, well, religion did not help. The no. fact that it's a sin didn't help. <laughs> you want yeah. to talk about why. Yeah. That's definitely one of the reasons. And and this isn't about religion, though. This is about, it's a God-given or if you're not religious, it's a it's a birthright of humanity that, and it's not just about procreating. It's truly a source of pleasure, and we are given so, that. We all have that exactly, possibility, exactly. so it isn't wrong. And I really believe that it, when we can get the conversation so open and comfortable, then it, there's going to be decrease in sexual abuse. I really believe that part of that whole sub dark culture is because we can't talk about it openly and so you're forced to go into well then in, let me ask you a question then is there a real different thought process in the male than the female yeah. you see the male says I, I i don't i don't have any children so yes. the male says it's my right yeah. i desire this yeah and and the, the woman is trying to please mm -hmm. well how far do you go to try to please if you're mm -hmm. trying to hang on to him if you think he's playing around all those complicated mm -hmm. things that yeah. happen and yeah. a lot of it the root is sexuality yeah yeah and and and, and and there are people that say, like I had a um, David Beck, the author of They Say What, and he's a sex ed teacher as well as a science teacher in the school system, had both of my girls. And he said that, you know, for boys, that just is a primary, that's just a primary thing. You can't change it. Men just want to have sex. That's it. That, that's you know, right. That's They're born their with number. That. Yeah. That's their number one. And then I'll have men that will come back, and I'm not going to identify any in the room who will say that's not necessarily true yeah we want to have sex but we also want to have a relationship that bonding experience as well so I, I i don't know i go back and forth on that i do i can definitely say that i think men have a, a normally at, when they're young a higher sex drive than than the girls and then that might reverse because i read this la times article when i first got divorced and it was called the seasoned woman Mm -hmm. And it was talking about, you know, the, the, you know, midlife crisis or, you know, married or not when they, they, they bloom and they, and they find a guy that turns their pilot light on. <laughs> That's a good expression. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Uh -huh. I found one, you uh -huh. know, and, and it uh -huh. was just like this most amazing feeling of, oh my God, this is what the big deal is. This is why 
um, um, there's songs written about it, or this is why guys really like it. It really is a source of pleasure. And I think for a woman, it's more difficult to just do the physical source of pleasure. If her whole being is yes. involved, if her Let's, heart is there and her mind is there mm. and the respect is there, then mm. there is no end, yeah. you know? Yeah. How, how many college students have been in a friends with benefits relationship? With it, where there's percentage? no commitment. Mm-hmm. How, how, what percentage of college students? Twelve. Two-thirds. Two-thirds? Two-thirds wow. of college students have been in Friends with Benefits relationships, citing the lack of commitment required as the main wow. advantage to such an arrangement. More than half of those who had sex with a friend said they had engaged in all forms of sex. 22.7% said they had intercourse only, while 8% said they did everything but have intercourse. And this is from Wayne State University and Michigan State University. Did they say it was, was, it, was it a pleasure? Did they regret it? Was it was a pleasure. It, it, it they was didn't a, regret that they did that. They didn't. Uh, well, yeah. let me tell you, I, I'm a graduate of a women's college, and I was uh, on campus mm-hmm. not very long ago. And one of their, we have male students. We have a percentage of male students in the theater and arts and whatever. And one of the young men house sat for me for a while. Mm-hmm. And he's one of seven boys. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, Alex, what's it like going to, to uh, school with a bunch of girls? He said, well, what's it like? I said, is there sex? He said, not on your life. I said, what? 14 boys and 2,500 women? Don't you go to bed with them? He said, no. The minute you do, they talk about you. How good was he? What shape was he? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and he said, then after that, if it wasn't good, you're put down for the rest of your life. I went, that's a very interesting so observation. Wait, uh-huh. We think the men talk all about it. He said, no, no. Right, right. Mm-hmm. That's and funny. And he said, or they'll call me at 4 o'clock and say, I want to hook up. I have a date at 8. I said, uh-huh. what does that mean? You want to have sex at four o'clock so you aren't tempted to have sex at eight? What does that mean? He said that to you? She, the girls would the say, girl, I want to okay. come and have sex with you at four o'clock because I have a date at eight. What? What? I don't know what's going on in the girl's mind. Mm. What does that mean? Yeah, I, I, and that's another thing that when I first started doing these shows, I was definitely one who said, I cannot have sex unless there's meaning behind it, if mm-hmm. there's some kind of a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I have to be honest, I'm, I'm reinvestigating. Changing <laughs> your mind, are you? Well, I don't, I don't know. know if I'm changing my mind, but I'm definitely reinvestigating that because what... Well, anyways, I shouldn't go there. I'm totally... If you've just tuned in, this is a great time to take a station I break. Have a uh, yes. Coffee. <laughs> Get out of the room for a minute. <laughs> if you've just tuned in, you're listening to... Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. You got me going there. And I am... <laughs> Dr. Marissa, and I'm here with Marianne from Gilligan's Island, otherwise known as Don Wells, and it is the retired professor in Marianne series right now on the air. And we're talking about sex, romance, love, and the next topic is, what do you think the penis size is? (laughs) For what? (laughs) For... <laughs> what is the average? Where is it? Where is it? Oh my God! I cannot. Oh, you know this by I know. heart. <laughs> no, I don't. What is the average? Oh, here we go. Oh shoot! I thought I lost this. This is this was the most important thing that I researched. Sorry, I'm just kidding. Average erect penis. Um, what is the average size? Isn't that much more important to a man than it is to a woman? No, this it is it is definitely the size of the boat plus the motion in the ocean. I have to say, from my experience, I think it's I think it's a preparation for you get on the boat too that makes a big difference. Da, well, the dock is important, <laughs> yes, <I think. laughs> and you got to come back to it to That's get off the, the boat. So it, there's yeah. a lot involved. You got to come a lot back. So oh, mercy. okay. <laughs> With the thousands of men that I have seen, I would say, oh my gosh. The average erect penis size. Not what it should be, but what the average yes, is. Oh, yes. I don't know. Six, According to the Kinsey Institute. You're very good. Five to seven. <laughs> now, is that a woman's inch or a man's inch, as I say when I'm racing sailboats? Oh. Um, uh, it's five to know. seven. It's five, five to seven. To, I was surprised. I thought it would be bigger. To be honest, with all the size talk, right? they all think it is. They all think it is. Like you know, what is this? See, this is a woman's. This is a woman's one inch, and this is a man's one inch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and then circumference. <laughs> oh, you mean take the tape measure all the way around? Uh, all the way around. <laughs> Two and a half. I have no idea how much it takes. I was surprised at this. Four to six <gasps> inches. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I had, oh, I had um, two of the most important years I've ever had in my life was I worked uh, as a project manager in a mental health hospital. And I had one woman 
loved her. And, you know, this is, I love the two years I did because it really spoke to how fragile the human mind is. You mm -hmm. know, she was fine and then she had a psychotic break and we were uh, a behavioral, uh, uh, behavioral therapy. So they would do things that they had to do for the week. And then on the weekend, if they made enough tokens, we would take them for an ice cream run. So we would go to thrifties and, <laughs> and you know, those old ice creams that have the paper around and you open the paper yes, so yes. it's like a cylinder uh -huh. and she would lick and lick and like one day she was like licking and I looked at it and I go what is that <laughs> and and it was a perfect shape of a penis and she goes it's the missing part to a woman's heart <laughs> I'm like Shh, okay she's she's fine she's doing just great <laughs> <laughs> there ain't any problems here okay so there's the size um what percent of 40-year-old men experience erectile dysfunction? 40-year-old. Well, 40-year-old. Now, you're talking yeah, about somebody who's not just one time because he was drunk out of his mind. It's sort of right. a problem. Yeah. 40-year-old men. Oh, I don't know. 10%? 5%. 5%. And then what does it go they up to for 60? They think it's happening. They think, yeah. 65-year-old <laughs> men. It goes up to? 20. Yeah. 15 to 25 percent yeah and and uh so george burns was asked when he turned 90 if uh, he still had sex and he goes that would be like shooting pool with a rope <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you do women have that same decline i didn't look that's an I interesting didn't look. question. I mean, I mean, they didn't ask. They didn't have that on the stats. But that is an interesting it, it, question. It, it, does it diminish oh, yeah, with yeah, women yeah, yeah, as yeah. it does with men? Okay, so so I had, um, when I started this again, I uh, part of it was because I was talking to women who said, oh, I'm way past that. And I was like, oh, really? And they were 55, 60, and 65. Three women, we were having a discussion, and they were like, oh, because I spoke at the California mm -hmm. Women's Conference mm -hmm. with Davy, mm -hmm. and we did a um, a sexual healing panel, and and they and they were very, you know, I I'm not, uh, it's 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 over, and I thought to myself, how sad. But you know, in analyzing that, what you're saying, I can understand what she's saying. But I think part of, and maybe it's just me, but I think part of the whole sexuality is the sensuality, and I think there's a seductress in women, mm -hmm. and I think the better you feel about yourself. The better you think you look, mm -hmm. the less tired you are, the mm -hmm. more focused you are in, in the happiness around you, that sexuality continues. If all of a sudden you see the sag and the pot belly and I'm just too tired because the kids have kept me up all night, mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. courting or seducing is gone. Mm -hmm. I don't think that ever leaves a man. I think right. that desire is always there. But I think part of the women is, is she alluring to him some way? Mm -hmm. What do I know? But mm -hmm. I, I kind of think that that's... We're yeah. more into that. Yeah, I, I have heard that, that, you know, if you want a long relationship, the, the man, the woman has to accept that he may never make more money than he is now. Right. And the man has to accept that the woman will never be thinner than she is right now, mm -hmm. that it's only going to go the other way. And that was an interesting, you know, but you... Okay, for those of you who didn't listen to my first interview and you're, you're okay with saying, unbelievable, she looks... 55 late 50s you're 70 Six. 76 oh my gosh you i'm going back older so. i'm going back you go older the last time you were here you're only 75 that was october that was october <laughs> i've gone over the hump now you yeah know? <laughs> and 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 everybody oh and of course everybody that i tell you that you were coming on today tell her that i love i've well, always see, they remember me in the short shorts ginger, but you look great well, now I, you look great now well, and you look you, sexy but, and you look sexy. Well, I think I still think that's important. I have two. I have two philosophies. I will not go to bed with a man I outweigh, and I will not go to bed with a man whose hair is longer than mine. <laughs> that's it. That's every. They can be I anything like they want. I like that. Teasing, I li no, you're not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I just can't get behind all yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a good time for a station break. You are tuned in to take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. And uh, it is Sexual Healing Week on the show. And we're going to take two and two to thank the sponsors who are responsible for bringing us Marianne to the show today. How do you prepare a young teen for the sexual culture they're growing up in today? Science teacher Dave Beck's hilarious and harrowing book, They Asked You What? 
does just that. It gives the student, their parents and teachers the knowledge and tools to deal with the reality of today's overwhelmingly sexual American culture. And it's a great, fun, thoughtful read. Read it yourself. Give it to your teen and or their teachers. Available for Kindle download and soft cover purchase at Amazon.com. Have a sports injury? Is your posture pulling you down? Does your body feel like it needs a tune-up? Have you been in an accident and you're not getting real relief from the pain? Then it's time for a free consultation with the experienced, comfortable expertise at Seal Beach Physical Therapy. With offices conveniently located in Newport Beach, Thousand Oaks, Moor Park, and Seal Beach, don't delay. Make your body pain disappear with excellent hands and state-of-the-art equipment at Seal Beach Physical Therapy. That's sealbeachpt.com. sealbeachpt.com. And welcome back. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. Today we have the fabulous, unbelievable 76-year-old <laughs> Mary Ann from Gilligan's <laughs> Island, Don Wells. And we are talking about sex, love, romance, and penis size. So um, I'm going to ask you another question. I've been doing this little quiz for her, and so far you're at like 80%. Um Let's see, which one shall we go to? Oh, how many, what percent of men always reach orgasm during sex? Mm. And how, what percent of women do the same? And this is according to National Health and Social Life Survey. What which percentage was, of men, men reach, reach orgasm, orgasm during uh, sex? I say 95%. 75. I was <gasps> surprised. What happened? It's kind of low. Yeah, okay, kind of lower. <laughs> My what age producer. group are we talking Jarvis about? Jarvis is like shaking his head. No right. way. 19 to 25. Uh-uh. <laughs> and, and then percent women. 50. 29%, which is why I'm doing this why you're this talking show. about this, yes. It's, it's, it's not right. It's not right. And, and why and, do we feel that way? Do we feel that we have to we have to do that to please him? Again, there's many reasons, but that is, uh, for me, I think mm-hmm. that's one of them. We're just... we're were conditioned you know make sure you come first you know please be my and guest. if he can't satisfy you how awful he's going to feel well kind of thing. It, it, <laughs> and and this is where again um Jarvis and I haven't talked about it and he's like no every man wants to know how to please a woman and I oh, talked to think? someone okay. else yesterday uh-huh. who said absolutely guys don't really care they just care that they get off yeah see, so well. so I'm not sure I think the truth is somewhere in between I think that there are that we don't give as much credit as we, sh- as we do, as we should do. But then on the other hand, when you say it's your turn and they don't do anything, then you, it, I can't help but think, well, they don't really care. Well, and how, how, how responsible do we feel? We yeah. wouldn't leave them hanging if we could, if we could help right, it. Right, right. So if so. you do, if you're with a man who, I mean, I think for me, the, the, what I've learned out of all this is it's up to me to communicate what I like. It's up to me to communicate what I want. And I don't know, if I don't know what I want, if I'm not comfortable with my body, if I'm not comfortable with, you know, trying the 11 different kinds of orgasms, if I don't know what turns me on, then how the heck can I tell somebody? So the, it starts with me. And then, and let me go on. Because the other part of start uh, feeling good is like you said, you have to feel good about your body. If you don't feel good about your body, and I'm not talking about the extreme, but hey, I, you know, 16 days ago, I just woke up and said, you know what, enough is enough. I don't have time to spend every day in the gym, but you know what, I have time to spend three days in the gym and I'm going to do more than what I've been doing just because I'm getting older and the weight is, you know, moving around and I don't feel sexy myself. See, that's what I was saying. I think the female feeling sexy really is the attraction to the man. But then we can do something about it. So listeners, if you're not feeling sexy about yourself, do something about it. You know what's a good thing? What? Read a book before he gets home. Read two or three chapters of Shades of Grey. Read Mm. something, the romantic novels that I grew up with, nothing, something like Mm -hmm. that. But do something to get your mind in another Mm-hmm. In another place, perhaps. Yeah, it's like music and a glass of wine, or or looking in each other's eyes, or something other than yeah. slam bam, thank you, ma'am, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I I I told two clients this week, uh, their homework was to get new lingerie and meet them at the door. No talking, no venting, no nothing. Just that's 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 what's going to make the relationship better. Not talking. And what are they doing for it. us? Is the next question. <laughs> 
Are they getting? Are they answering the door in their loincloth when we go over there? What, well, what? I don't know if I like the loincloth. You know, that was the. I'll tell you, my first sexual picture at eighteen. My friends took me to a nudist colony, and the first sight they had a, a blindfold, not Fifty Shades, but just to so I wouldn't know where they were kidnapping me. And I took the blindfold, and, and it was a trampoline, and all these naked men were jumping up and down, and it was not attractive it at was all. Not attractive. I think the female body is much better looking naked than the average male. Oh, I think an av- average male body is beautiful. You think so? Yeah, I do. Even, well, we're talking know, about with two perfect bodies. Loins. Yeah. Two, perf- two perfect bodies. Yeah. I think yeah. the male body is beautiful yeah. as well. Okay, so yeah. How do we love imperfect bodies? How do we... We love ourselves first because we are in an imperfect body. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. All this pumping up and blowing out and stretching and all of that. What's the real you anyway? Well, it's a balance. I mean, you don't want to be letting it all go, like right. I mentioned, but then we also have to be kinder about looking and going, hey, that looks pretty good. Well, if you're with somebody that you care about and not a one night stand and somebody that cares about you, that's natural. Mm-hmm. That, that, that there's there's a sensuality anyway. There's a sensuality in your voice when you're having a cup of coffee over a counter somewhere. Mm-hmm. There's all of that. It isn't mm-hmm. a, it isn't like you're on display and he's on display. Mm-hmm. But that takes time to get that communication. That first time go around is a tough one. Yeah. If you're a teenager just doing it with everybody, where is there any intimacy or really respect or really loving yeah. and caring for yeah. you? Yeah, there, there's definitely a difference mm-hmm. between intimacy and sex and then friends with benefit sex. It's a completely different thing. The yeah. s- friends with benefits of sex, though, could you ever, could you then just be friends with everybody and I'll, every time you look at him, he's just my hooking up guy? I mean, that's interesting. I know, it is. What happens afterwards? Inter- and I'm, I'm where you were. Yeah. I'm where you were totally. But, but it was like, if I don't, if I wait... For a relationship. Okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, so long. it's over. It's a long time. I mean, it was like 40. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're adjusting you so you, we can see your beautiful. Oh, uh, you were you were wearing a headband. <laughs> a <laughs> veil a, would be better. <laughs> um, but uh, let's go to your book. You you wrote a book because I know you sort of talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I want to know a guide what you to say life, in the book. What would Marianne do? Okay. And it's if you're raising a teenage kid, girl or boy today. There are there are things that. You know are going to happen. You can't stick your head in the sand. There are things that are still important to you as a teenage kid. Do you mm-hmm. f- finish the job? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you fail at it, try again. Um, is it not nice to be polite rather than rude, etc.? And then it's respecting who you are. And I don't get into the sexuality necessarily in the book. But I think if you have a good, healthy sense of yourself, mm-hmm. even no matter what your mother says to you, mm-hmm. I think that, that you're, you're preserving the inside of you. You don't sob and cry and tell everybody everything you feel about everything, do you? No. It's only your special, <laughs> it's only your special friends. Yes. Well, that should be the special man you take to bed mm. that takes that part of you away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the book is, is, is trying to live in today's world a little bit. We're all at odds. I mean, every time you turn on the television, it's scary what's happening. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely. kind of about how to get along in the life today. We're all in our rooms doing little things on the computer, and, and, and somebody can say something to you that can break your heart, and they didn't mean to because it wasn't handled with please or sweetie or something along the way. And it's right. a very difficult time to – you have kids, and it's a very difficult time to maneuver, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, had both, actually. I had my daughter and her best friend on the air, and it, it was just – wonderful were they open with you about they it? were very open we i asked them specifically you know when should you have sex and they said not during high school they're not emotionally ready and i was like fabulous oh. fabulous <laughs> thank yeah. you god yeah. yeah okay sex partners how many uh sex partners do do women have between 20 and 59 in their lifetime? You mean it's over at 59? No, no. but but in this study a national <laughs> okay, center for it's... health statistics how many average yeah. sex partners, or how, what's the average number? How many average sex partners? They're all average. Aren't they? <laughs> was there anybody that was definitely supreme? I don't think so. <laughs> or below average. Well, well Wendy, I have to put this in. I'm going to probably <laughs> learn to be regret this, but this is a horrible thing to say. But do you know? Do you know what a dicky do is? No. Because when you were talking about you don't go to bed with a guy who's what heavier than you or has no that I outweigh or his hair is longer so, okay, than mine. Okay, okay. So a dicky do when we were talking about body size, a dicky do is when the guy's um, stomach protrudes out more than his dicky do. Oh, <laughs> well, that could be a requirement. <laughs> what about the girls? It's called the booby do. The booby do. Okay, <laughs> boo booby do. <laughs> 
So that's what we're trying not to go for. And, it, you know, we want to get to the, the best that we can be uh, on the on the on the looks. But if you do um, if you do have an average body, I have an average body. I have to do the work to, to look in the mirror and go. Yeah, of course we I do. I look okay. We do. Because and it's... the moisturizer and taking care of yourself and mm -hmm. all of that makes you feel better about mm -hmm. yourself. Oh, I, yeah. I told people that you have not had cosmetic. And no, they were I like very impressed. And I told them, you know, that it... it scares me. But I think, no, it shouldn't scare you. I think attitude. Oh, I do too. Mental attitude. Is your... Absolutely. Is, is, is the difference. And, you know, when, when I... Um, I'm not going to go there. So, uh, okay. average sex partners, I was going to say something about Ginger, but we're not, we're going to be nice. So, um, average sex partners during lifetime, average number of sex partners They're during the under, lifetime for, for, women, for women, for women, for women, how many, 21 to 59, 20, 20 to 59, 20 to 59, four. Gosh, right on. She's like right on, right, Jarvis? <laughs> Jeez, how are you? To, and I specifically did not give you these questions ahead of time. So four and men. Fourteen, seven. No, is that all? Yeah, that's all. They all lie, see, don't they? See, four <laughs> I thought was low. Seven I thought was low. Between yeah. twenty and fifty-nine. So that means that. And oh, the reason why this is important too is the role that media. Because I think I'm surprised because of the perception, yes. right? Yes. And what our movies are about and what our shows are about and what the reality shows are about. We think it's a lot more. Yes, we do. But the reality, it's not. And yay. That's right? good. That's that very mean, good. That's good, right? That's, is, okay. Are social diseases on the decline? Well, I only had that one statistic yeah, about, I, uh, I would have to go. We'll Probably. do a follow-up. Yeah. And we'll have all these why questions from you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see. I think I've given you all of them. Oh, oh, oh. Online dating. What do you think about online dating? I got in so much trouble from one of my sexual healing guests because I told her I was on Tinder. Woof. You remember that? What is Tinder? Man. What is Tinder? I'm going to put you on Tinder. What Tinder is, is this, it's, it's dating for very busy women <laughs> and men. You, I've never done anything online. I want to look you in the eye. I want you to talk to me. I don't want you. Well, to... well, you you do that too. It's not. It, it it's it starts online is just a method of increasing your dating pool that over and above what you, who you would meet at normal functions. That to me is the definition of online. Dating. Well, my feeling is that poor guy that's trying to trying to get dates must be really in trouble that he's trying to search the. Search the right, web that's to find the, but I think I, that's BS. I think that's an old belief system. I think okay. that in now the old in, days, huh? it, it's not that it's in. The reality is that we don't have a lot of exposure to different people. And who's to say that it isn't a good thing to find someone who matches you across the country? It, well, I just it, did a C Steve Harvey a couple of days ago, and they fixed me up, you know, just for fun. They had two guys. They did? Yeah, well, he had two guys, and it was a 30-second thing, and I picked one, but I said, he has a sense of humor, and he said, let's go for coffee. So let's all three go for coffee. Let's sit down. I mean, it was just a 30-second thing. But one of the th one of the Three guys, who? With Steve? No, with the two guys and me. Oh, oh, oh. I took both guys to coffee. So <laughs> yes, one on each arm. But I did, one of the guys said, you know, this dating online. I said, what is it like? He said, oh, the picture's never what you think. Right. They're never what it is. It's more disappointing than it is helpful. And I've never done any of that. So anybody can write a bio that makes them seem wonderful or take mm -hmm. that picture that somebody filtered or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So how do you know? I guess if once you start to talk on the phone and once you start to, to text or whatever, mm -hmm. doing that then makes a difference that you're communicating. But you, anybody can write a love letter. Right. Right. But if you are a, a, a recovering workaholic and all the time you spend is, you know, at work and you have very little time to go to and you don't like bars. Okay. And you do want a relationship. Then online dating is a place where you can sort of pre-screen. So it's to me, it's like a bar online. So but you get a lot more information in a very short time. Now, Tinder has a bad reputation because it started as a hookup site, but now the, most of the men that I see their profiles say they are not interested in a hookup. And then you can put anything you want on your thing and say it's not a hookup. And I've met like some really nice people. Nothing that you know, just, magical. I, I, I guess I'm nervous about that. I guess. Yeah, I, that's okay. Well, you. Can, people can think of. You know reasons to get to you, but and maybe they it's can't get I kinda, you. They can't I have get a, you. Kind of a name, I suppose. Right, you you're Just different. To you're see different. What she's like, and, and by the way, I have pre-screened about fifty men 
after the last show, I did have people, you know, email and Facebook message and send me stuff. And, and I, I didn't, I didn't get the feel that any one of them were going to be, you know, yeah, yeah, that, 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 no, I didn't get anyone that looked like they might be a match because I think that, um, I mean, I have to get to know more now that you only have two criteria around hair and about. Well, <laughs> it can be an SOB for all I'm concerned, but he just got to make sure. No, no, yeah, that's but, interesting because I've it never is, done that. Yeah, but it is that what you mentioned last time about the crush. You know, they see you as oh, yeah. Marianne. But then I think they treat me well. You see, I don't think they'd be abusive to me or right. or over the top because, right. of, because of the kind of crush. Yeah. The crush on Ginger was she's hot and I'd like her on my arm. Right. She might have trouble. I don't think I would. Well, maybe now, but I don't think. I would. Yeah. I think there's a respect that comes with Marianne, and that goes with raising your children too. Yeah. If you feel good about yourself, you're not giving it away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and the along with that one, when you feel good about yourself, and you you know all the cliches around, we well, have to love yourself first, mm-hmm. and uh, you know there's there's you know searching for Mr. Good Bar, and 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 like the one the one. Where's my one? Where's my soulmate? Where's my soulmate? And I found that all of those things don't make you feel good. Mm-hmm. You know that that when we had a caller say, you know, I just don't think that it's my it's my time this lifetime I don't think I'm going to meet someone special in this lifetime and I said with that attitude you definitely won't (laughs) and if we I'll tell you what's worked for me if I see every relationship as short as one date as long as five months as long as two years as a chapter in my book of romance that has you know beautiful paragraphs of things that we've done and places that we've gone and conversations we've had that it doesn't matter how long that chapter is if I have had joy in that relationship and when the joy is outweighed by unjoy then it's time for the chapter be over but I I agree with that but but how a lot of times things have to be gone through there's a crisis in the family or there's a crisis in a marriage or something that you have to kind of stick through it right sometimes right right and love and attraction are two separate things true true well okay well i mean i think love love is deep i mean if you if you fell in love with somebody that then became handicapped and and couldn't do anything that love would still be there and idolizing him would still be there your sexuality might be down the drain Mm -hmm. or if you just have sexuality then that's out the window anyway. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's a combination, and I think we're all looking for love or a partnership, I think. Maybe not. I think some people might be better off just single and living their own life. Well, if you don't, if you don't get along with yourself, then you probably should be by yourself. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> because <right. laughs> you're probably not going to be that fun with anyone else either. But I, I believe that there's many, 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 many people to love. And I, I do too. Believe, I do too. And I believe that... <clears throat> It is another gift of life to have a relationship with yes. someone. And romance is something, and I've said this millions of times, I'm sorry, listeners, if I'm repeating, but it's not something you can get from your friends. It's not something you can get from your family. It's in a separate category. And it's you know? so important. It, it is, is so, so important. important. To feel like a woman, and romance does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, So that's why... The online dating or the dating, the Tinder, whatever it is, it's just about, you know, creating that that flow. Now, there is a downside to that because it's that kid in the candy jar syndrome. So, you know, first sign of trouble, oh, on to the next. I'm not doing that extreme. You know, it is, it is you have to cultivate, like you said, beyond the, the attraction. You know, is there something that's going something to there. Mm-hmm. hold you more than and and in that I will have to say if you do have sex without a relationship you don't have that no you don't no, and you then don't. it becomes car- not carnal is such a loaded mechanical word. it's just kind of mechanical, a mechanical. it's it's Satisfying meaningless urge and so what it's me- yeah. so so you're you are definitely not into meaningless sex not at all not I at all. am on the fence <laughs> I've never, uh, before I was where you were, when I started sexual healing was, what, last February. So I've been doing this, this is my 12th, coming up will be my 12th. So I have moved to, not to say that I'm I, I'm pro-meaningless sex, but I'm not 
con me anymore with sex. Not negating it completely. Not negating it. Day, uh, friends, uh, what is that? Uh, with fringe benefits. Fringe benefits. Yeah, mm-hmm. it it does have something. I'm not quite sure. I'm still on the fence. But I, what I think is, if you start giving your body, that's a horrible description. But once you've given yourself to someone, it's an intimacy you can't replace. And if that person isn't what you thought they were or doesn't treat you well, there's a little self-loathing that happens with that. What? What? what How did I pick that? Why didn't I see through mm-hmm. that? I mean, you can't help that. I guess, and I guess men are the same way. Right, but but that goes back to when do you have sex i mean you meet someone and and sex is one of those areas you have to be compatible that way so you cannot wait forever right right because if you get along and you have these conversations for four hours and everything's wonderful and then you meet them and you have sex and sex is horrible that's that's a deal breaker yeah part of it (laughs) right yeah right yeah so so it becomes this it's an interesting, you know, gray area. It sure is. It yeah. sure is. Yeah. But more will be, be revealed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know. I, I well, what well, we still have to uh we'll do we'll do research on that. I will load What's Tinder. What's my assignment? I'll I'm going to I'm going to load Tinder on your phone. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It gives you a profile of some guy? Well, no. What is well, it? yeah, it, it, it does. It gives you a picture, and it tells you how many miles away they are. I should be, like, getting Tinder to to How many to miles away? In other words, I don't want to date somebody in Riverside. Right, I just want to date somebody right, in Studio right. City or something. Yeah, and then and then it has they pull the description from Facebook. Oh. So you can even change it. But they'll just say they dated Marianne. There's no, is they're really searching out to what, what Don Wells is really like. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, she is Marianne, but not yeah. completely Marianne. Yeah, let's you know? let's That's talk about that thing. for mm-hmm. a, a second, um, because this comes up with a lot of comes. This comes up with a, a lot of people who are known in mm-hmm. in um, Hollywood, right? So, Alex Baldwin being the most uh, <clears throat> angry example of that. <clears throat> it's like, how do you, you know, you want to be recognized, and then at some point, you don't want to be recognized. Well, then go to, you know, then be a ditch digger. I mean, you know, you can't help it. If you're in the right. movies, people are going to recognize right. you. You can't walk with a mask over right. your face. Right, right. <clears throat> but but it you don't is... want to be dated just for who you are, just the name of who you are. Right. So you alluded last time that when you, because you're Mary Ann and people are attracted to you, men are attracted to you, uh, but they're attracted to Mary Ann, how do you, and, 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 I, and you made a comment earlier before we got on the air about something like, um, but I want it as Dawn, not as Marianne, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so it sounds like, is it a love hate relationship? Being no, 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 it isn't at all. There's okay. just there's more. Excuse me. Okay. There's more depth. One. There's more depth to Dawn Wells than there is to Marianne. And the people who are attracted to Marianne are attracted to the wonderful service surface. Uh, characteristics, which he's kind and loving and cute and cheerful and all of that. There's mm-hmm. a deeper side of Don Wells than that. I, I am very much a Marianne. I'm very positive. I'm very optimistic. I'm very mm-hmm. much a partner. I'm all of that. Mm-hmm. But there's a deeper side. And mm-hmm. for somebody to really love me, you got to understand that I go away for six weeks and I do a play or that I could be kissing somebody on stage or mm-hmm. that th- the things that are not typical housewife, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but the same thing, I don't want a man that isn't working and just comes home and lets me support them either. Right. We all have our values and what we look for. Mm-hmm. And I find now that I'm older, I mean, it's very interesting to see the younger men that ask me out. Mm-hmm. And is it just because they want to say I was on Don Wells' arm or is it that crush coming? And they're all gentlemen. I've never had anybody do mm-hmm. anything disrespectful to me mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. And that's because I didn't play that big sex symbol. I played right. your sister or your best friend or your first date. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. then that makes a difference. There's Mm -hmm. a respect there, which, thank goodness, that's nice. What's the youngest guy you've ever dated? (laughs) Probably 20 years younger than I am. 20 years younger? Yeah. I had a 19-year-old buy me a beer. Oh, well, I probably have done that a couple times, too. But, yeah, yeah, but not with... Not date-date. No, not date-date. Yeah. I dated a a 29-year-old that I... And did you have something in common? Well, not really. I mean, well, he was attracted to me. Yeah. And so he, he was very persistent and... And uh, when I finally said yes, and we went out for dinner, and and he said, you know, I've always been attracted to older women. And I said, I mean, I'm thinking to myself, that's not how I want to be seen. Well, but, but, but anyways, but this is why truth. I don't want to be a cougar. I don't like the term cougar. But um, I said, so I said, so how does it feel dating Mrs. Robinson? <laughs> and he says, who's Mrs. Robinson? Oh, God, of course. <laughs> that was it. 
That was it. That was it. Well, I wouldn't be against that, but I don't know that you'd fall in love with that. But yeah. I certainly yeah. don't want a man with a, as I said to Steve Harvey, don't bring me somebody with a walker. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Forget right. telling you how old I am. Yeah. Don't bring somebody that's my age yeah. that isn't yeah. with it. Well, I just got the signal. Time to go to, away. I had time Aww. to go away. I mean, this was like five minutes. I know. It's like being with your best buddy. I know. There's so much more to talk about. So we'll have you back again. I know that. We're, and we might even make the, the regular make show the happen. I know. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it would. So yeah. any last words about uh, sex and romance? Just, uh, and... just respect yourself. Mm. Nothing bad's going to happen if you care about you. Mm. Beautiful. Give your heart. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And that was Don Wells, much more than Marianne from Gilligan's Island. And it's time at the end of the show where we have a little balance bar. Time where I tell you where I am, what's going on, and how you could be uh, happy 88% of the time. So my Asian Oprah giveaway is... I guess we're not doing sound effects anymore. <laughs> uh, it is a one-hour life balance assessment with me. So if you're feeling out of balance, if you're tired of being tired, and you, you really want to start this year um, seeing the best of who you are, then feel free to contact me and um, just put free on the guest book. And if you do go to my website and see, there's a funny splash page there saying under construction, I am trying to make it easier to find the shows. I got that feedback. And so that's what I'm doing. So just go back there, put your name and email address, and I'll give you the award. And Catherine won the last uh, Asian Oprah giveaway last week. Just to thank you, Catherine. And where are we? Um, oh, Sedona. If you are at all interested in going to Sedona with me, it is my fifth annual Sedona Balance Retreat on February, the, uh, sorry, May 16, 17. I'm telling you now so you can put it on your calendar and it's something to ask for for Valentine's. So please go to my website to give that. $50 dollars will hold your spot. And the 21 Day Fast from Complaining, round 44, starts February 1st. And yes, I am making the app. It'll be a fun little game on the uh, on keeping you complaint free. And if you would like to help me with that and, and be part producer, please go to GoFundMe backslash H R A X L O H Rax Low, and you'll find my page. And you can donate any amount, and you will help me with the app, and you will receive the app. You'll be one of the first to do that. Next Tuesday starts Romance Month. Yes, it is again. And uh, we are having the best-selling author of Yoga and Love, Bish Vish Iyer, and then followed by, yes, four-time past Oprah guest, and now four-time past Dr. Marissa guest, Dr. Pat Allen, the sex therapist from Millionaire Matchmaker, will be on the air again with me and if you haven't heard it's one of my most popular podcasts uh, she is a hoot Oprah calls her the comic mother superior and I celebrate every Valentine's with her and she usually uh, scolds me for my dating practices and I'm sure this year won't be any different since I am still out on the market and happily so but uh, please tune in on every Tuesday for another episode of of take my advice i'm not using it get balanced with dr marissa pay that's p for positive e i and remember it's all about balance peace in and peace out Hard in a cage. It was a book, don't turn a page. I couldn't see past my rage. 